And here we go. We have lift off. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our CCA chamber pressure looks good. Following up. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. This is nothing to be igniting in the flare, correct? Alright folks, that little audio bar is jumping like it's supposed to be right now. John Galloway with NSF, let me know if you can see and hear me. Got some other images behind me here as well, but I'm going to look over at chat and see if you've got any 5 by 5s for me to tell me that all the technology is working that brings the photons into the electrons that turn into, I guess, other photons that come out of your monitor and slap you in the face wherever you're watching from, I guess. Vibrate sound, too, for your ears. But anyways, uh, it is Intrepid Museum's Astro Live Show. We do this once a month with Intrepid Museum. You'll get all sorts of different cool guests and stuff like that on the show. We talk to folks from NASA. We talk to folks that build satellites and rovers and operate cranes in space. I guess they're robotic arms in space. You know what I mean, though. Give me some 5 by 5s in chat. Looks like the audience is all here for us today because we have a very special event. You know, some of the shows we do on Sundays are actually uh, our NSF lives with the NSF crew where we talk about the week in space, the events we've done and that sort of stuff. And if, if you don't watch the live shows, maybe you've seen our This Week in Space episodes we put out every Friday where in 10 minutes or so you can get caught up on what happened in this week's space news. Well, this Sunday... I guess it was either just me doing the news. We figured we would tag in some friends of all the channels, Intrepid Museum and NSF here, because I've got two folks pictured behind me, Mr. Mike Masmino and Gary Reisman, who are going to be helping us with the space news. I'm just here to do the introduction and let you know that the Astro Live events happen every month. I've already said that part. Sponsored by the grant from the New York Space Grant Consortium, awarded to Intrepid Museum. But... I'm not going to talk about the news. Let's just turn it over to them and see what Mike and Garrett have to say about the news. Let's see here. Do we have everybody in? I see Mike. I see Garrett. Video working? It looks like it. Mike and Garrett, I don't... <laughs> do y'all ever go on shows and it's like, all right, now we're going to do the litany of all the things that Mike's done in his life and all the things that Garrett's done in his life, and then 30 minutes later, because y'all have done so much, uh, we can get on with the show. Chat, y'all know who these guys are, right? They can't answer us. That's we, okay. We oh. have to supply the answer to them. Yeah. Like we won't hear them talk. Um, yeah. Anyways, two cool. funny astronauts, yeah. two astronauts. Um, how do you all like that to be said? Former astronauts, retired astronauts, recovering astronauts? What, what do you all say? Yeah. Don't, I think we'll say two funny astronauts if this turns out well. If it turns out well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if we're funny. At the if we're end funny. Of the show. Yeah, we'll come back and edit what you all are at the end of the show and see how right. our viewers are. We, have, to... we haven't done an episode of Two Funny Astronauts in quite a while, Garrett. I know, and I get lots of people complaining that, uh, that I've had I've had episodes. Yeah, all of the viewers, the three or four people that were watching. Yeah. Really... <laughs> no, we had a lot of viewers. I've get I get asked that pretty regularly. Uh, when do you remember? So this is another episode, sort of. That uh, we haven't done one, and it's got to be at least a year, right? Oh, yeah, I think even longer. Yeah, I think it was yeah. 2020, wow. 2021 was the last one I saw. You'll have a YouTube Holy channel and cow. Like, podcast and all that stuff. Well, that's right? what we did a bunch of them. I think we might have had one. Some, I don't know. But anyway, right. well, it's been a while. So. It has been a while, and and we're, we're still looking for a sponsor. So if anybody out there has got a lot of money <laughs> that they <laughs> – not even a lot of money. We don't need much. A little money. We don't even need we – don't, yeah, we don't need money. We need uh, – <laughs> Well, hey, right, about, yeah. how well, you know, we used to say to what? Go, huh? How about What's I just that? turn it over to y'all and okay. let you go ahead with the show here? Yeah, but I think before right. we go any further, Garrett, getting back to this too funny astronaut thing, we want to warn people that we're not claiming that we're funny, right? No. What, what are, are we claiming? Ideas? What? We're claiming that we're funny for astronauts, you know, which is not right. saying much, really. Hold uh, us to that standard. Yeah. Not like that we're funny people. Right. We're just funny for <laughs> astronauts. It's a really low bar. 
There you go. That's what he's always said. That's a really low bar. <laughs> wow. We're, we're right back into it now. Yeah. It's um, like it's been over a year, but it's like we never left. Yeah. Well, you've got a lot of interesting books behind you, by the way. Yeah. I'm hey, reading all. My gosh. One, it's really. You know, one really interesting book mm -hmm. that uh, I'll tell you, it's right over here. You can't see it. It's just off the screen. Is your book. You came up with it. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my Moose, new one. You don't right? have my new one. Uh, no, it's right here. I'm telling you, it's right. Really? It's right here. It's like, here right, you go. That's what it looks screen. like. Oh, like right, uh, there it is. Oh, moonshot. Yeah, moonshot. <laughs> it's just there. Tell All us, right, tell I got it. That, that, that's list, my list. hint. I've got to send Garrett my new book. I don't think I've sent it to you yet, and yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I got to get that out to you. It's her. your own signed copy. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a copy. I, I got. I got. I got book money. You got book money. That's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing we got. I really like that line. I got. That's all right. I got book money. I can afford books. That's right. Um. Yeah. So anyway, so that's that. But you have a lot. I wasn't trying to get you to talk about my book by commenting on your books. I actually can see them very clearly. You have a very high def camera. I'm reading all is very interesting Thank stuff. Yeah. Very, very nice variety of things and some other cool things back there. Uh, right. So uh, we should probably uh, talk about something uh, that's been going on for, you know, it's been an exciting year since uh, however long it's been since we've uh, done one of these, Garrett. Mm -hmm. But you have some very exciting news about what you did uh a report from just this past week last week a few days ago right why don't you tell us what were you doing last week garrett well yeah friday i just got back here to los angeles i was i was in at, at the cape for um the axiom 3 crew launch uh this is the third private uh space flight up to the international space station all three uh, uh under the auspices of axiom space uh using a spacex rocket the falcon 9 dragon launching um uh, friends of ours, you know, this mission was commanded by Mike Lopez Alegria, who also commanded the very first Axiom mission. And in between, we had Axiom 2 commanded by Peggy Whitson, uh, two very good friends of ours. And so Mike asked me to come down and be the crew family escort, uh, which is, you know, it, back during the shuttle days, we would regularly send astronauts down to be with the families uh, during the launch and also during the landing and, and splash. Down. In fact, you did this for my family. I did it right? for a lot of flights. I did it for your family. And we have a whole episode from Two Funny Astronauts. I think the first one talking about your mom. How is your mom, by the way? Is she doing all right? Yeah, she's doing yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she's doing okay. Mean, she's, she's, so that means she's doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah. How old is your mom now, Garrett? Now 82. She's 82. That's nothing. My Uncle Romeo, I'm going to his birthday party next weekend. You ever met my Uncle Romeo, Garrett? Yeah. Yeah, what, he's like 100 now, right? 101, baby. He's 101. 101 on Saturday. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Happy birthday, Uncle Romeo. Let I'll, me I'll let right him now. know. I'll let him know you said that. That's but, fantastic. okay, so, you know, you were a family escort. For, should we, maybe we should explain a little bit about what's going on with these Axion missions. What do you think? A little bit different. Yeah. You say, like, these are actual private astronaut missions where, yeah. uh, in the past, the first two of them, some rich dudes paid mainly, right? And then they had... Well, well, the first and... one—the first one was mm -hmm. yeah, a bunch of private individuals. Right. That, uh, uh, they each had significant net wealth. I, I right. guess you could say. Uh, and um, uh, but the last two have been uh, the the second one was kind of a mix. We had John Stopper, right. who was also a private individual, but then right. we had two astronauts uh, sponsored by their government, sovereign what we call sovereign astronauts, uh, uh, to distinguish them from individuals that buy tickets. And wow. that was they were both from Saudi Arabia, right. and they flew with Peggy. Now this mission was what they th this this cracked me up by the way you're gonna like this yeah this mission um, was uh, the they called the all European mission okay so <laughs> they, they all yeah. all three of them the, so you 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 have one of our friends because one of the rules that NASA made is if you're gonna send private individuals up to the space station they need a chaperone they need somebody who's been there before understands the space station and can like mostly right. they make sure they don't bother the the crew right an uh, adult you know, supervisor. Some supervision, uh, yeah. a, a space babysitter. Yeah, so that's not really true. That's, they, they have to have shouldn't one be baby person. a chaperone. But, yeah, someone a, uh, a commander who's who's got experience, which is what you want in every mission, just about. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So they, that's their requirement. So they, so Peggy and Mike have flown with these guys. Right. And on this mission, it was you know they got Mike L A. Mike Lopez Alegria, who as you know is a man's man, a man about town, a, <laughs> a ladies' man, a, a international man of mystery is uh how i like to describe the guy uh and, and there you have it in a nutshell that's right yeah. and he uh uh so the, so so the other three people uh we had the very first uh turkish astronaut the very yeah. first person from turkey 
to fly in space. Very exciting. He, yeah, he was he was uh, up there, and there his family was very proud. Uh, and then we had the, the only the second Swedish astronaut, right? Marcus, he was up there. Yeah, and Christa, uh, Christa Fuglesang was on was on my, in my astronaut class. That's right. I saw dude. Christa. I saw Christa. Oh, how's he doing? Ago. He was down there. He's doing great. Oh, great. He's looking good. I think he's moisturizing a lot. He's doing really? well. With that. Yeah. Well, he lives. He's up there in Sweden. He's back in Sweden, I think. Right? Did he yeah. Tell you where yeah he's back in he's, Sweden. Yeah. He's, ba- he's yeah. moisturized. What is? What does that mean? Was he sweating? I mean, he's looking good. He's looking. Oh, young he's looking good. Peaceful. I mean, he's looking. Yeah. He's very healthy. Yeah. The I think, cold I think weather they have up there. I don't. Maybe it's something the water in Sweden. I don't know. Well, no, he was one yeah. of my. He's one of my favorite people. He's a good guy and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the first, and he, my astronaut patch has a Swedish flag on it, as because you know one of the countries represented my class. So yeah. this was the second guy, but he's also an ESA astronaut, though, right? He was, was he selected yes. by ESA? This guy? Yes. Yeah, so this guy was selected mm-hmm. by ESA, and and so Alex European Durst Space Agent, European Space Agency, I guess we should European say. Space so Agency, yeah, know. yeah, right. European Space. Yeah. So, uh, so he was down, and 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 the ESA guys, the European Space Agency guys, they were supporting him. But the right. kind of weird thing is, that there's also an Italian astronaut. Oh yeah, Walter, right? So Walter, Walter's down, great. Walter, I know. I'm friendly with Walter. Yeah, Walter's a great guy. Good guy, I like him. And um, but he was sponsored by the Italian Air Force, right? The Italian Space Agency, I guess. Or Italian I think it Air was Force. the Air Force actually, Garrett. I don't think it was the. Yeah, I think you're right. It's the Air Force. But so you, it's yeah. not ESA, right? No, yeah, right. That's what I was going to ask. That's the way. That's where I understood it. Yeah. So you get the the Italian guy, which I'm pretty sure is in Europe, but was not yes. part of ESA. But then you have the Swedish guy, which I understand is also in Europe, but uh, is was was actually was supported by ESA. So it was very yes. complicated. So we had Alex Gerst was down there, and and he was supporting uh, uh, Marcus, and then and mm-hmm. then. But I was there to help out with LA's family, nice uh, Alper's family, and with Walter's family. So I had them all. We got them all to the launch, and and we all got together. We're all excited on the first launch attempt. We're getting to the vans. We're driving to the Cape, and we get a text from. Mike LA that they were scrubbed. Uh, uh, what day was that? Was that Monday? When was the first attempt? That first attempt was Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. It's past Wednesday. Right. Okay. So they, and they, yeah. So then they gave it another day, right? Yeah. So what we're gonna do? So so. Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh yeah. What'd you do? So then we decided to give them a tour. So Alex and I oh. took the families around and we went to the VAB, the nice. Vehicle Assembly Building, the giant building where Beautiful. we put the Saturn V together and. Uh, where they're keeping the SLS these days, and and we took them out to the pad. Nice, thirty nine A. Where they, they didn't get, they don't get that launched as part of their festivities to begin with. I mean, isn't that something they should typically get? Was yeah, you think, the they, you think they would, but actually, no. Uh, you know, now most of LA's guests, they had all seen this. This is like the guy's what twentieth launch or something. Yeah, he spends. They get excited when he's on Earth. He spends <laughs> more time. He spends more time in space than he does on Earth. He gets a patch <laughs> when he's on Earth. <laughs> when he's in space he doesn't that's right yeah he, gets, he has he has uh a, a, a more uh he has yeah he's, yeah he's got more earth i missions. used to i used to say that to mike fall all the time remember that guy mike fall yeah, yeah he was always going to space that guy yeah one of our american astronauts at nasa but kind, also kind from of, britain kind of kind yeah. of american yeah, yeah he was a british naturalized citizen from england all right, all right, so where were we on this? This is all good, right. I think. Doss, are you still there? I'm here, is yeah. Is anyone still listening? Did we lose them already? <laughs> well, we're wait, still I, I got to tell you. Wait, this is Deep Dark this. Secrets. <laughs> all right, so you were giving him the tour of the pad. Giving the tour. And, 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 and so we go and uh, we go to the uh, launch pad 39A. This is a the launch pad where, right. where, where Apollo 11 launched right. from. Neil and Buzz and Mike Collins right. went to the moon. And, uh, and we're out there. And more importantly, it's where STS 123 and and uh, one uh, one thirty two launched from one hundred nine and one twenty five as well. Oh, okay, oh, one twenty five. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's a very historic pad. It is um, STS one, I suppose. That was well, those are our flights, folks. We were on those space flights. That's right, those are so our we flights. launched from third thirty nine. Wait a minute, thirty nine A or thirty nine B? A thirty nine A. Which one is north? B is north. B is north. I always remember it's Boston. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. I think North, it might have been. B is I think it might have been on. I don't know where I was. Anyway, yeah. so I was on A or B. I don't know. Anyway, go <laughs> yeah. ahead. I was on one of them. You were definitely on A or B. All right. Go ahead. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, A. So we go up to A, and the, the cool thing was, first of all, we had their rocket, which was in the vertical on the pad, ready to go, sitting there with their Dragon capsule up on top, and um, and that was pretty cool to see it out there. But you know, to me, what was even more impressive 
was they have now a launch tower out there for Starship. Oh, where? Right next to, like, right over to the side on 39A, over to the side of where the launch tower and the, and the launch pad is for that that we launched from the, from the shuttle. And 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 the same, you know, it was built originally for the Saturn V, and it's got that big tower and the and the Falcon 9 rocket sitting right there. There's two sitting right there next to the tower. And those things, you know, you've been out there. You start, stare up at that tower. The thing is gargantuan. It's like, what, yeah, like yeah. Two, over 200 feet tall. Yeah. And it's huge. And, and well, it's yeah. always dominated that sky. And now you look over and the Starship Tower makes that thing look puny. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. It, it, it just dwarfs it. It's like So SpaceX they... built, built they built a pad there? They built another tower? Yeah, because they plan eventually to launch Starship out of there, too. Nice. I, I got, got this. The... Y'all, I got this for you, but the tower is slightly shorter. This is the one at Starbase today. Uh, the tower is literally sticking up into the clouds. Give me give me yeah. one minute. Y'all keep talking. I'll get you the one at 39A. Yeah, get a picture. I, you I, know, got actually, it, I got it. Yeah, if you want, I put it on my Twitter. Uh, if you want to go look there, you can see I, I I put it out there with the with the with the with the Falcon Nine right next to it. And yeah, yeah. Give me, anyway. give me one second. I'll get it for you. So it's just it was just staring up at that thing was was just like uh, it's just wow. You know what's coming next? And the other thing, just the whole the whole cape is really bustling. I mean, they yeah. got um, we. <clears> I, <throat> I drove by the I drove by the uh, Blue Origin facility down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what, where they're making I'm, a new Glen. Yeah, there was used to be. I remember the last time. I think the last. I can't imagine this being the case, but the last time I was at the space center for a launch, anyway, was when Megan MacArthur went to space. That was coming up on three years ago, and I was down and spent a couple of days with my son. With Dan was with me, and uh, I remember that that space, uh, a Blue Origin building was colossal, it, and it's gotten yeah. bigger. Apparently, you were telling me. That's before. right. I mean, I, the, since the last time I've been down there, when I saw it last week, it looked like yeah. it had doubled in size. Wow. Like, yeah. A Something's lot of, going on. <laughs> yeah. And Something's then uh, we, we drove by Hangar X, where SpaceX keeps all the Falcon 9 boosters. That is that down? That's at the foot at the launch pad? Is that where that is? Or is that No, you know, it's kind of, you know where the Eagle's Nest is that, that we always point out to yeah, the tour? Yeah. Like, oh, there's yeah, the Eagle's sure, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's a tree, by the way, kids, and a real... A real eagle's nest is in this tree. That's right. Yeah. So is it like an attraction to see? It's not like, you know, a perch to look and spy on people. It's no. uh, actual birds. It's actual birds in the nest. Yeah. And, All um, right. So go ahead. So it's like, it's kind of over there. Uh, yeah. Over there. So um, so anyway, so we went there and we, we saw Hangar X, which I expected to see. But then uh, behind it, they have Hangar X2. They just built a brand, mm -hmm. SpaceX built this giant the facility, I think, originally was intended to um, be the start of Starship production at the Cape. Because Starship's so big, you can't transport it. you got to mm -hmm. build it at the launch site. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so I think that was the intent. But now I think they're using They need it for Falcon 9, and they still have yet to build a ginormous. So what's, anyway, the point is, is that it's. It, it, I remember when we, when we stopped flying the shuttle, everybody thought the Cape yeah. was just going to kind of wither and die. Yeah. And, um, and and there were some visionaries that said, no, 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 this commercial thing is going to be great. It's going to be a real shot yeah. in the arm, and it's going to be all for the better. And everybody's like, yeah, we've heard that before. That's a <laughs> that's a that's a promise that's not going to be kept. But it really was kept. I mean, that was the cool thing about it was just seeing all this development yeah. down at the Cape. And then you got uh, all the Artemis stuff going on with the, in the VAB and then 39B mm -hmm. with the with their mobile launch platform, and you got. Um, uh, Boeing Starliner being put together in the old uh, shuttle hangar next mm -hmm. to the VAB. And there we go. As as you say this stuff, I'm pointing this camera at what you're talking about, Garrett. Like, this is our camera over at the uh, KSC press site. So there's 39B yeah. with the SLS stuff on it. But y'all were talking about the uh, Starship Tower over here at 39A. Yeah, so that's the mobile launch platform for the SLS rocket, the the new moon rocket for Artemis. Mm -hmm. And then you, you pan to the right there. There, right there. Yeah, we got now it. Now look at that thing, Mike. Look at that thing. You see the thing on the left? Yeah, shuttle launch tower, right? The black thing with the uh -huh, yeah. Lightning thing. Then you see that giant thing on the right? Yeah, it dwarf. Wow. It makes it look puny, right? And by yes, the way, a... that thing is actually a little further back, so the optical illusion. Yeah, it's gonna say it's probably working a bit against of a you here. Visual so, effect going on there. They built that, and I think that's a new big LOX tank there. Yep. Uh, that uh, sitting next to it. So they're getting wow. ready. And, and here's the thing. Do you know what's really crazy, Mike? You want to hear something really just nuts? What's that? You see at the bottom of that Starship Tower? You see yeah. there's like a, a little L sh like a little bracket coming off the side? Yeah, what's that? Those are what we call the chopsticks. So with that, those are two arms that can uh -huh. move up oh, and down yeah, yeah, yeah. and in and out. And yeah. the, the idea, yeah, right there. Yeah, they so are. That when 
it moves they go up to the top of the tower and when starship when the first stage of the super heavy booster flies uh-huh. by, the plan is and you can see the launch mount too just underneath you see those mm-hmm. those posts right so the plan is that when starship super heavy booster flies back that those that this mechazilla Ooh. giant chopstick thing is going to go up and grab it and catch it wow and stick it right back on the launch platform fuel it up ready to go again wow that's great how are you going to get it, it like th- under, underneath the grid fins, right? That's it, wow, that, is, that is great. How are they going to get it there in the first place? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's a, this is Garrett. You're talking about the chopsticks and the OLM, the launch mountain stuff. This is a live view from Starbase down there from one of our Starbase cameras showing the oh. whole the whole shooting oh, yeah. match. You can't see the top live. of the tower because it's in the clouds, but uh, there's the chopsticks. There's- I got closer There's cameras, but it's raining out there today. Snooping so. around at the workers down there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know how it well, is. I, I, yeah, I really, I mean, that's really cool, Garrett. I think that uh, it's hard. I mean, I think it's hard to really express to the folks listening unless they've have gone through this sort of, but just to, to share it with them of how the Cape was such a cool place to go when we were flying space shuttles. And then after the shuttle program, it really did, it really did take a hit. I, you know, it just wasn't as much work there. But now it's back. You know, it's just it's just rocking down there again, probably more so than it ever has because before it was just NASA doing stuff, and now you have these other companies that you've mentioned a few of them down there. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting, I think, to be down there. Probably it's a happy place again, isn't it? It really is. And yeah. um, you know, it, it wasn't that way in the beginning. It was very depressing. For, for yeah, like, yeah, uh, it wasn't good. The last the last few years, we were astronauts back. You know, when we were after the last shuttle flight. And, and told you know when it started things started happening again it really was different all of our launches were taking place in russia with our mm-hmm. people and you know i just we know a couple unmanned uh uncrewed missions were going up satellite launches and that stuff but still just wasn't the same yeah as uh you know sending people to space again and these other big rockets and everything else and so we, we were talking about i don't know if you want anything else you want to add about that or you want to maybe talk a little bit about oh i do want to tell you a story so, yeah, so i was telling you sure, about yeah. the, the european yeah, your day off people. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. Got the, you got the uh, Italian. You got right. the Swede. Right. You got the uh, Turkish astronaut. Right. Right. And then you get Mike L.A. Right. Yeah. So Mike L.A. And he's representing Spain, I guess. Right. So Mike L.A. He he's, likes. He's. He. They made. They actually. They made a beer, uh, called El Comandante, with uh-huh. him with the, in the Spanish flag, and uh, he's like doing this whole. And he's got. He's wearing. And actually, in one, he just wore an American flag. Because, yeah. by the way, he's an American citizen, right? He went he to the American United Air- States Naval Academy and was yeah. a NASA astronaut. N- Navy a government pilot. employee. Yeah, military U- officer US- in the United States Navy. U.S. Navy, exactly. United States, yes. <laughs> not the Spanish Navy, not the no. Armada. That's right. <laughs> he wasn't in the... Yes. So, the uh, Armada. He's not a conquistador. Yeah. He's uh, <laughs> in, in, uh, one of our guys. So, anyway... Uh... <laughs> he's... <laughs> Those guys weren't good, by the way. Nah. So yeah. so he um so he's he's over there and and uh, he's got the Spanish flag on this mission. He's got the Spanish mm-hmm. flag and the American flag. He's got one. He's got an American here, a Spanish there. I think. I like he's setting sail for Queen Isabella. Exactly. Yeah. And so they're making it. They're, they're playing up the European missions as all European because yeah. there's Mike L.A. <laughs> yeah. Representing Spain. Yeah. And here's the thing about L.A. You know this. You know, not only was he a Navy pilot and a NASA astronaut and and stuff. But the other thing is, you know where he grew up? He grew up in, where did he grow up? Because he says Boston. Is that where he grew up? No, he's got family back in Boston. But he grew up in the oh. OC, right? In the what? Oh, no, that's the C. Orange County? OC, Orange Maybe. County. Really? Mission Viejo. Really? A Spanish sounding name. But that's where, you know, I think he might have been born in Madrid, but he grew up in, in the OC. So I give him I give him a hard time about that all the time because he's well his father like, was from Spain I thought right his Isn't father his... his father was legitimate yeah Spain like uh, yes and his yeah his family his family but but he grew up in the OC and he's making this big deal about being the Spanish the Spaniard right and uh, so then he uh, he comes a off paychecks the a paychecks a paycheck Garrett <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah I know you know. Um, we all have our niche, I guess. So anyway, he he uh, he comes off the helicopter. So the, the crew comes by a helicopter to the shuttle launch facility, the giant runway there at the Cape where we used to land the space shuttle. It's 15,000 feet long, this ridiculously huge runway. Right. 
and they bring this helicopter in with the crew and they land and they land and I'm there with the families. Right. So I got, uh, you know, his, his immediate family, all the immediate families of each of yeah, those four nice. guys. Yeah. And the, and the Teslas are sitting there. They're getting ready to drive yeah. them to the pad and nice. they come out of the, the helicopter and they stand. And by the way, the press, oh. and this is getting a lot of attention because in the Italian, Turkish and, and Swedish presses is a big, big deals. Oh, sure. And they come out of the helicopter and they're arrayed before us it's standing in like echelon there the four right. of them and all of a sudden mike la his, his phone rings and he and he takes the call yeah and we're like what are you doing you know we're all is your family saying goodbye yeah before you launch into space and you're taking a phone call and he's got his phone up there and he looks at us and he goes it's the king of spain <laughs> <laughs> And it was. <laughs> it was the king of Spain. Did you answer? I didn't even know king, Spain still had a king. No, uh, no, they did. There's they, a lot no, of royalty I, over there still in Europe. Wow. Actually, so the king of Spain calls him up. King of Spain. For, wow. no, no, okay, the king of Spain calls him up. And what I did answer was so after he hangs up the phone, I said, hey, it's good to be the king. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the king of Spain. Shush. Yeah, it's the king. That's so, pretty good. Anyway, did you, I said, did you tell the king that you, you grew up in the OC? And he's like, uh, <laughs> the OC. I never heard. You're, I mean, you're out there in California. I didn't know it was called the OC. When did oh, you yeah. discover this that it was called the OC? It was a TV show. Uh, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? One of those housewife things or something? Das, back me up here. Help me out with you. you oh know no, I OC. know what you're talking about. I, just, I, I know what you're talking about. I don't. Thanks. I've never seen the gang sign sort of thrown up that way, but you know. Wow. Oh. Oh. OC, yeah. OC. I never, I never. Well, what do I know? Um, well, that sounds pretty cool. So, uh, so you're at that launch, and uh, this is this is pretty significant. There was a lot of. If we look back at you know this last year, we look at 2023, Garrett. What there were over 100 launches, weren't there last year? From the oh, Cape, no, that, there were there were almost 100 launches just by SpaceX. Just by SpaceX, I think it over yeah, ni- yeah over you're 90 and close to like two a week. It's just insane. Cadence. Yeah. Um, and uh, and next year, I think their goal is to get to about 130 launches, which is SpaceX just, alone. Yeah, and that's for Starlink and Starship and uh, Falcon and all that stuff. I think that was just Falcon launches. So Falcon and Falcon Heavy. Uh, I think okay. they actually got the number. How many? How many was it last year? Just under 100, right? And they. I, I thought it was. Yeah, you know, I think it was over 90. I remember. I don't. I don't know if it was quite 100, but they had two yeah. like right in a row on the same day. I remember that was pretty cool. Yep. They had um, so. Yeah, it's pretty amazing the pace that they got going down there. Yeah, and the reusability is just... Um, yeah. They had one booster that got to 19, uh, 19, they used it 19 times. Wow. Single booster. Um, amazing. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, yep. and, and, they're, and they're, you know, they keep they keep pushing to go do even more. But it's good that, you know, I, I'm very happy about SpaceX's success. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've worked there for seven years, so yeah. I'm kind of biased. I, I I love the guy. I love the company. I love the the guys that work there. It's great, but I do think honestly, it's it's good for the country to have a little competition. So I was actually rooting yeah. really hard for Vulcan uh, to be successful, yeah. and and that was cool to see that. And launch. they just had a launch. They launched the uh, that private moon spacecraft, right? Wasn't that what they launched? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Which yeah, it didn't end up that well for the for the space. Oh, the, but the Vulcan worked well. That that Vulcan is another from the United Launch Alliance is another. Another right. uh, launch vehicle, another rocket, and that. So that's the other thing I, I thought we might talk about is what's going on with the moon because that spaceship that was the first attempt at a commercial landing on the moon. I guess we still haven't had one yet, right? The, yeah, it was the first, that well, that was the first U.S. commercial attempt. So the Israelis had a couple. They 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 had an attempt that didn't work out, and um, but the but this is the first U.S. commercial as but, part of yeah. The- but I, I guess what I'm saying is no commercial entity has pulled it off yet. Is that's that correct? That true statement. So, okay. but we've had two other countries in the past year that have landed a spacecraft on the moon. That's uh, right. India. Mm-hmm. That was pretty bad. It was at the end of the summer, if I remember right. That was a big news, that one. Yeah, and in Japan, was... a little bit more under the radar, Japan. I, you know, I thought we'd be hearing more about that. But they also made it. But I guess they had a little bit of trouble. They did land, though. But I think they yeah, were they having a little trouble a, with they the spaceship. They did a successful soft landing. They became, yeah. uh, what, the fifth country? The fifth country. So yeah. that was a huge accomplishment yeah. uh and the, and the, and it was a pinpoint landing i think very accurate yeah uh, and they they did get the rovers out there but i think they're having a little problem with the power generation that yeah. they're there 
Uh, so, but 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 that shouldn't in any way detract from incredibly successful mission. Great, great accomplishment. And uh, yeah, so now five countries. And a year ago, there was only three, and now there's five that have done it. Yeah. U.S., Soviet Union before Russia, mm -hmm. and then um, and China. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And now, we, and we have a few more commercial attempts coming up. I think China, you got to you got you to give them some props because they put a, a rover on the. The far side. Yes, right. And they put up a way to communicate with it, which we should yeah. we should educate everybody. There, that's not the dark side. Not the dark side. Pink Floyd. It's the far side. <laughs> yes, it's the far side. So There's the moon, sunshine, sun shines on it. It's just out. We can't see it from here. Whenever, whenever, yeah, whenever we see the new moon where it's all dark and the moon is, you can't even see the moon in our sky. It's all dark. Guess what? The far side is all light. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's it's why one, it's one of those amazing things. We've got an eclipse coming up this year, right? You know, it's, yeah. that's going to, I mean, we've got eclipses all the time, but well, a couple of year, but this one's going to come across the United States. Right. So, that's right. but the, uh, the thing that is amazing how all that works out, <laughs> like the sun, even the eclipse, right? The moon is large enough, further enough away and large enough that in compared to the sun that it perfectly blocks out the sun. <laughs> You know the alignment, the size, and the alignment of it, and it it orbits and it always shows the same. It orbits and rotates at the same speed, so that it only shows that one side. Yeah. To us, that's why we call the other side the the uh, the dark Far side. side. It's always Far showing, side. Yeah, the moon more, always more presents the one. And, and you yeah. know why that is, by the way? Tell me. What? Tell me. Tell you. It's gravity gradient stabilized. So in other words, yes, the moon is not the perfect uh, yeah. sphere. So. So that the the bulgy part of the moon is is is, is uh, points towards the Earth because it's got a stronger gravitational pull. Isn't that so, amazing? Uh, yeah. The way that it all works out like that. I know it, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. It is pretty cool. Um, all right. So uh, what are we talking? We're talking about people going to the moon. So this mm -hmm. is a this is now we're gonna have another. I think Intuit Machines is the next one that's gonna try a commercial mm -hmm. uh, flight there. I don't know. They were supposed to go like mid-february i don't know if they decided to wait a little bit after what happened with the uh was it the peregrine the one from pittsburgh yeah. uh astrobotics or something like that i think the name of that company was i might be messing that up but anyway, Astro yeah, yeah astrobotics yeah, did the peregrine yeah. pittsburgh but uh so that's kind of interesting and the u.s uh is gonna with the space launch system now that's been delayed for another year right so those guys are gonna be hanging around for a while yeah yeah that crew Reed and, and his crew they're gonna be uh uh, hanging out a little bit while I don't think that was yeah. a big surprise. They have some pretty thorny technical challenges with their yeah, work. I think it's working yeah, I, I was kind of shocking they were gonna do it that quickly. Mm -hmm. And then uh and then we had some Starship uh launches last year. Yeah. And uh they were spectacular. They sure were. And they got more coming up, I would think. Right? Yeah. That thing's so, such a beast. I mean uh, you saw the launch tower there, you know. So yeah. the SLS was the, the the most powerful rocket ever successfully flown, right? Uh, and uh, I think it has that's correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it has 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at at launch. So from that, do the calculation, Daz. Figure it out, will you? Real quick on the flight, it depends on how many engines yeah. turn on when they launch it. That's how much thrust it has. No, 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 no. The SLS. Oh, SLS. Yeah, SLS. Yeah. All the engines turned on. Yeah, they they all turned on. I think I, I got it somewhere here. Uh, but anyway, they, 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 um, yeah, here it is. Hold on. I'll get you the right number here. 8.8 okay. pounds of thrust. Uh, when it, yeah. so by that metric, uh, it's the most powerful rocket. Now it, 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 it the Saturn V still, I think beats it as far as payload to orbit because as, uh, the current SLS, I think has a bit underpowered upper stage, but, um, but anyway, they're, they're, they're trying to fix that. But mm -hmm. the point is, is that it's a big, big rocket. It bro yeah. finally broke the, the record that the Saturn V held in that regard. So Starship, you know, we talk about 8.8 yeah. 8 being over about a million pounds more than the Saturn V. Starship, for, uh, when it launches, if, as Daz pointed out, that all the engines turn on. <laughs> it happened the first time, but, but it happened the second time. All of them turn on, and that's 17 million pounds of thrust. Wow. Nuts, right? You can go like, somewhere with that. It's like twice as powerful as the Saturn V. That's insane. Wow. Yeah. So that theoretically, that would get like even some of these deep space probes that were, you know, that they have planned to go to Jupiter. You would get to Jupiter a lot faster with that spaceship. Could you do a direct, a direct route? Are you still because like they launch these things to Jupiter and it takes like a decade for them to get there because they're coming back and forth. 
Yeah. They come back to Earth and swing around and get a gravity assist. Mm-hmm. Would this help? Is that big enough to help with those with the unmanned missions to the to the solar system as well? Out out of solar system. Yeah, well? you have that that amount of, of payload mass. You could you could launch a very large, um, you know, upper stage, and and then you you could do it without all the slingshot complicated yeah. trajectories. So you that would save a lot there. of time, and you could send more stuff. I mean, the other thing is the size yeah. of the payload is compromised with a smaller rocket. You can't have everything on it that you want. So you could put really more stuff and send it more quickly. That'd be great for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, but it's really designed to, to throw the starship itself. So the upper stage uh, okay. doubles as a spacecraft, and 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 that's what we're going to use for Artemis uh, three to actually land on the moon, which and that got delayed too just recently because you know uh, we got a lot closer. There was a lot of progress made between the first and second launch attempts of Starship, but they both at the end the result was the same, which was kaboom. <laughs> so well, we're, we're, all right, but we're, we're, let's just let's straighten this out here. Yeah, so yeah. we're talking Starship. Are you talking the launch vehicle and the spacecraft on top? Yeah. So, so Starship. You just can... mentioned that the Starship is the, yeah. you know, they're also the what we call the the vehicle on top, the spacecraft that will land on the moon. We and, should clarify yeah. this because yeah. So yeah. a lot of times we we talk about Starship as, and meaning both stages. The right. there, it is, there it is. So what you're seeing right here is you're seeing the 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 first stage, which is really the super heavy booster. Right up, you see where those fins, right where that cursor was a second ago, right where those fins stick out, yeah. that's the beginning of Starship. And Starship is the upper stage and the spacecraft that sits on top of the super heavy booster. But a lot of times we refer to the whole thing as Starship, right. which is okay. confusing, I know. But, so this is what's going to land people on the moon. The right? upper part be the of land. Right? Yeah, the, land, yeah, the lunar course. lander. Uh, yeah. That, yeah, that's the that's the booster. Thank you, Das. No, it took and me a then, second. You got it. And that's the Starship at the top. And uh, and that oh, he's like John part. Madden on a football game. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I know. You need some he's more true. X's and O's. Yeah. Um, so that thing's going to land on the. Mm-hmm. That's going to go all the way to the moon, Starship, and and that's going to be the vehicle that brings the 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 Artemis three crew down to the lunar surface. Yeah. Yeah. And there. It goes. All right, and then uh, a lot. I mean, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, so that's what we're looking forward to this year. You think there'll be, it'll probably be, we're not going to see Artemis go anywhere this year, no. coming in calendar year 2024. But yeah, we've got a couple other exciting things coming yeah. up. We got, uh, so we'll see more Starship launches right. and hopefully they'll keep making progress and hopefully get to orbit. They were so yep. close. I think they were within 30 seconds or something of, 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 of inserting uh stars. And you know what, what happened apparently that, 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 that prevented Starship from getting into orbit was, they didn't have a payload on that test flight, right? So you have to mm-hmm. simulate that mass, uh, so it's, so you can test like you fly. Yeah. And, and so what they did was they loaded extra liquid oxygen up there. Oh. To simulate the, that they normally wouldn't carry, but just to simulate the mass of the payload. That's and then they had to vent. They had to get rid of it. So like oh. I think about thirty seconds before shutdown and orbital insertion, they vented all that liquid oxygen. Oh out, no! And it went down into the engine with kaboom, <laughs> and then that's when. And, and which the ironic thing is they didn't even have to do that. You know, they could have just taken yeah. something or something or another Tesla. I don't know. They could have done something else. <laughs> you put another, you put another, yeah. put another car in orbit. So um, I'm pretty confident that they'll, they'll fix that real quick. And when are they trying again? Do we know we can look forward to another one coming up soon? You think? I think they said it as early as February, right? Des? Is that, yeah, is that uh, shooting around mid February is the best we know right now, sort of tracking towards that. So we'll see if it happens. It's always, oh. it's always two weeks away, right? But we're coming up on two weeks till mid February. That's pretty, that's amazing. I mean, usually, like you're saying, <laughs> next Artemis might be in a couple of years. You know, we're only waiting a couple of weeks for this other thing. So, yeah. uh, yeah. that's a and nice pace. Got- uh, then we got the the first flight of Dream Chaser on on Vulcan will be the next Vulcan launch. Is going to take when is when is that? Do we know you have a, a date on that too, Garrett? Not that you should know all this, but I don't. Have, when is uh, that coming? That's on un, that's uncrewed though, right? That's uncrewed. Nobody's going to be in it, but uh, and it's it's a cargo craft, so it's a part. Is of it going to boat. station or where is it going? That thing? Yeah, I think it's going to station. So they are going to actually send it to station. That's a good question. I'm not sure if the first yeah. one actually goes all the way in docks or mm-hmm. not, uh, or berths, I should say. I'm not sure about that. And it, so that was Dream Chaser was up there with uh, SpaceX and uh, yeah, orbital. What is it now? Orbital ATK, wherever the Northrop Grumman for the right. for the for the cargo contract, right? Oh no! Wait a minute for the 
for the commercial crew contract, right? They were they were competing for commercial crew. That was one of the entrants. Yeah. Uh, they, they were one of our competitors. I, I was leading the the proposal right. team for SpaceX. Oh, well, that's why they won. But that's right. So I'm a little biased here. I'm a little biased here. They they um, the dream chaser, but they they hung in there. I got to give them credit. They found a way to keep the program going. Yeah. So they're they're they doing this on their own dime then, or are they? I uh, can't oh, imagine. No, no, no. It's it's uh, NASA uh, brought them in as a as an on ramp to the commercial. Uh, Cargo resupply services, the CRS, okay, which is right now it's SpaceX and and Cygnus, as you mentioned, right. yeah, uh, and now they're bringing uh, Star uh, um, Dream uh, Chaser. Dream Chaser for cargo. I got to be think careful. I, I, I'll be honest with you. So we, we you know we're, we're competitors, and there's always some some good good natured ribbing that goes on, you know, with these things. And so we used to call it the Pipe Dream Chaser. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very nice. Not that isn't that isn't nice. That's not nice at all. But it's it's gonna it's gonna happen. They're, they're actually gonna launch it here coming up, and it's, and and good for them. I'm I'm happy to see that. Like I said, the more the more success in space, the better. And that, and that thing's gonna come back and land on a runway at the Kennedy Space Center. Yeah. Is that how to get that back? I think it's a plan for the for it to land at at, at KSC, but I think it could land anywhere. I don't think it needs uh as big of a runway as a shuttle did. So I think they. I they, wouldn't they, think. Or, I remember they little. were. When we were competing with them, they were talking about bringing their crew straight back into Ellington Field in Houston. Oh, Garrett, I, I got to get some Dream Chaser imagery on the screen here for you, since you're such a fan. Yeah. So they, um, so when are they going to put people inside of that and let one of our friends drive it who are working over there? Well, you know that was the original idea, but they kind of turned it into a cargo version because that was yeah. their way to to to, to bring uh, money in the door but you know it's always a possibility that you could you could go back to the the crew and i think there was a plan for they were partnered with blue origin for orbital reef i think uh and their plan was to use it to carry crew back and forth mm -hmm. as well as cargo so I, you know they, they they certainly haven't given up on that uh, and that's that's coming up in uh in february we think uh, is that what we're, everything's happening in february uh i think i think the second mentioned? vulcan launch is that February or March? Or it's coming up this. Anyway, it's coming up like first. Quarter. So this is all exciting stuff uh, that we've got coming up pretty early. And uh, when is Polaris Dawn, which is going to be the first EVA out of? Well, when are that? When are those? When are those guys going? What are they going to do? Oh, they keep pushing that back too. But it, it's uh, yeah. that that's slated for I think this spring or summer. So uh, and then there's the the uh, you know hopefully Sunny and Butch will finally. Fly I hope out those guys get to go this year too. Is it Spanky involved with that somehow? Spanky, I think he came off of that. Maybe he's he might be commanding like the second Starliner. The first the first crew is going to be Butch and Sonny. Okay, I hope they get to go. Yeah, soon they've enough, been, you know. They've been waiting a while, uh, so uh, be good for yeah, them. They, they're hanging in, man. Yeah, they hung in there a lot longer than you and I did. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah so <laughs> we saw and Spanky man is in my class. Don Pettit is going. This Don way. Pettit. Don Pettit is like was he like he's like ninety years old now, right? Let's see, let's see, he's uh, like my uncle Romeo going to speak. No, he's got a. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, Don is. I think I heard something where he may. He's going to be turning. I don't know if this is true, but someone said he's going. Well, he's going to be close to. I'm. I am. You know. He's. He's a bit older than I am. He's like. I think he's in his late sixties already. So he may. Uh, he may end up turning seventy in space, as someone told me. Oh, wow. So that's really quite a. You know, if you think about it, I don't know that's really changed a lot in the astronaut office, right? Where guys. They seem yeah. like I don't know, but like the the classes before ours, you know, like the class in ninety two and ninety, those guys they flew like four or five times, I think, pretty quickly, and then they got out of there like in ten years, you know, with four fly. I mean, I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. They seem to fly yeah. a lot, and then and then our class came in in uh, the ninety six class, and you guys ninety eight, and so on, and it wasn't as as much as many flights for us, it seemed, but much, yeah. but those guys are still there. But, you know, we can't really complain because that's, I think that's. No, I'm not complaining. It's the that? only reason we got hired is because I hired so many. Oh, agents. yeah, right. If they, that's right. They're like, oh, we don't, we have too many astronauts. Oh, no, you don't. So, <laughs> yeah. I'd, be, I'd be doing something else. That's right. You're, you're no, open the floodgate, man. Yeah, let it, let them, let it, let the people in. Yeah, you're, no, you're it's a much better way to go. Biggest, no, I'm just biggest. commenting that they've hung around a lot longer. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, there was a couple out, but even like Jerry Ross, I mean, Jerry, Jerry was selected maybe like I think in 1980 and and he left uh well he was there over 20 years easily right but uh he must have left like in 20 geez how long was he there 30 years <laughs> so like, maybe that's not that long but my class uh arrived it's going to be 28 years or 
Uh, yeah, it's gonna be 28 years, 96, and they're still there. Yeah. Yeah, 28 yeah. years this this spring or this yeah. summer. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so those guys keep flying. Um, how do we oh, get them? Of, you know, hey, yeah. speaking of uh, milestone yeah. and birthdays, you know, we yeah. got the the Kelly twins, the Mark and Scott Kelly. Yeah. Turning 60, right? Yeah. And uh, we're My I think we're both going to their party. Uh, we're going. Next month. Yeah. I saw you on the RSVP list. Yeah, I'm, I saw you as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'm going to that. I, th- I think that should be fun. Uh, I think it'd be great. What, 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 what are you going to get those guys? I'm just going to ask you. What, what I, I was thinking of get, getting them the same thing I got last year, which is a a, a gift card to Target. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to get them? I don't know. I think I saw. I think I saw a note saying they don't want you know. Don't we just want you to come? Don't worry about bringing a gift or. I got so to give, give me your book. Yeah, <laughs> I've already. <laughs> I've already sent it to Scott. Uh, you did. Scott actually gave me a quote for the back of it. Oh. There's a quote on the back of the book. So I've got quotes on the back from the book from uh, Scott Kelly, Joe Torrey, a mutual friend of ours. Yeah. Uh, William McRaven. Do you know this guy? Admiral McRaven? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Admiral. Yeah. Great guy. And Mayim Bialik from The Big Bang Theory. Oh, my God. Host of Jeopardy. So those are my four. So I sent, yeah, sent oh. one to Scott already. And, um. But uh, he's got an early version of it because he gave me a quote for it. But, uh, yeah, that should be fun. We're all getting older, man. Hey, you know, if, if I would have known you get a free book, I would have given you a quote. <laughs> I'll give you a book anyway. Don't worry about it. I've got book money to no, cover. It's, it's, it's right here. It's right there. Right, yeah. It's just, it's just off enough. the – right there. Yeah, no, that's – don't even say – what is that? Thermodynamics or something like that. You'll, get, you'll scare people. I recognize a lot of those books as I'm looking around. It's pretty good. That engineering mechanics one just over your head. That one right behind, you see that thing behind the patch, sort of, the brown one? No, keep going. Keep going one more, that one. That's actually Simone's. That's my wife's. Are you serious? Yeah, that was her. Yeah, I remember. I think that's the same one I had when uh, I was a sophomore at Columbia. And uh, looking at that, I still get the shakes. This is this is classic. You probably you must have looked used this. Oh, yeah, the actual dynamics book. Bait and the other guys. That, yeah. yeah, Mueller and White. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. looks pretty new. Have you ever looked in that book? Yeah, doesn't look like anyone's read that one. I got a co- I got a couple copies of this actually. This is I got this recently. I got another one in my office. Oh, okay, USC. yeah, I got I've got I've got one of those, of course. Yeah, yeah. My first year in grad school, I got that one. Yeah. The uh, that's how you always tell if a book is useful. I think you look at the if it's been if it's you know if the binding of it is all worn up, you know, worn yeah. down. Now kids don't even buy books. No college students, I don't think you know they they rent them or they. Get them yeah, online yeah. or something like that. So yeah. things are different now. But uh, so where were we? We were saying a lot of a lot of interesting things coming up, and maybe we'll talk about one more thing or so, and then we'll. Oh go wait, wait. Also, I got another question yeah. about the Kelly party. You think that? Oh yeah, think? sorry. What's that? So I'm looking forward to it. There's going to be a lot of fun people there, and yeah. Um. Uh. But the uh. I'm just wondering. Do you think they're going to have a, a a bounce house? Because I really hope. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. the last one they had. One that was great. Uh, Did I, there's a story there that you stumbled on that you don't even know. Oh, really? Scott Kelly came over my, I think it was, uh, geez, like one of my kids, it must've been Daniel's like third or fourth birthday. And so Scott came by with his girls. His, uh, he had two daughters and, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Mark has the two daughters. Scott came over with Samantha, his, uh, his oldest kid. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so anyway, so he comes over and he had the bouncy, and so he and I go in there with the kids. Oh no! And the thing starts wobbling. The kids are real, really smart, so they get out of there. He and I start wrestling in the thing, and it tips. <laughs> and we're like stuck underneath this thing with the thing, you know, the air machine still going. So, but that apparently, my my daughter, uh, my daughter and I were out in San Francisco, and uh, and Scott was there. We actually Scott and I were doing a talk at the same thing. We went out to dinner with him and his wife, and. Uh, and she was saying, my memory of you that I'll always have, he says to Scott, is you and my dad trapped, you know, in the in the bouncy machine because you guys were, like, fighting. Because we started, like, you know, screwing around in there. So if uh, they hope, have one, that'll be fun. I hope that, I hope next month that we get – I would love to get to yeah. see that uh, uh, a reenactment. That'd be fantastic. That, that was also a line we used, Garrett, in one of our very first performances. Two funny astronauts. Do you remember this? The astronaut reunion of 2002, or 2000, not even 2002. Okay. The astronaut reunion of 2000. Uh-huh. 
we were saying we both were unflown and we started i think you had you wrote to a friend of yours that wrote jokes or something like this oh my goodness i forgot all about this but you're this right. is a long time ago man it's 24 yeah. years ago yeah yeah so i remember so we're we you and i i get a charlie precord who i just heard from this week and he sent me a note huh. to see what was going on charlie precord was the chief of the office and he wanted me to do some funny stuff and i was like i don't want to I mean, I'll do it, but I need some help. So I recruited you, and That's you and right. I went out there and did a did a did a little bit. And one of the things we said were like something about uh, there, we want to go to space. So we can find out if it's flat or round. And and Charlie Precourt says uh, the Earth's round, guys. And we go, how do you know that? This is we're all kidding around here, by the way, Dots. This wasn't yeah, yeah, a serious yeah, conversation. Yeah, boy, you're going to go viral. We had like we had Astro, like I remember Astro, it was like Astro Astro says that the Earth is flat. No, it was just, <laughs> we were just joking around. But like Buzz Aldrin is there. Remember all the Buzz Aldrin was at yeah. this thing and he was sitting right in front of him. all the old guys are right in front of us. Now we're yeah. the old guy. At least I'm the old guy. But Buzz Aldrin and uh, Scott Carpenter was there. Those yes. guys were still alive back then. They're all at this at this party. And you and I are trying to entertain him. And so Precourt goes, I, cause I go, how do you know it's round? He goes, because I've seen it from space. And then we went into, oh, yeah, there you flown guys go. I know yeah. this and that because I've flown in space. You don't know right. anything. And then we went yeah. into a bouncy thing. Yeah, so they have the bouncy over at the Ballooner Festival. And we were bouncing up and down on the moon <laughs> bouncer. And Buzz Aldrin comes and says, yeah, that's all right. But it's not like being on the real moon. <laughs> remember that, remember yeah. that line, Garrett? Yeah, I can't believe There's you remember this. There was a lot. Dad had no idea that we were going to be talking about moon bouncy, those bouncy <laughs> things. But so That's the awesome. Kelly brothers uh, party should be pretty good. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you there. Maybe we can do a, We should do. We should do another one of these Das uh, after the party. Let you know what happened. Oh, I bet we get some good material from that. Hey, yeah, that'll game. be good. Happy to support. <laughs> that'll be a good party. And then uh, is there anything else you want to say about that, Garrett? I had one other question for you. No, no, that's fine. Go ahead. So, What's your well, you you know you do a lot of a lot of interesting things, and one of the things you mentioned to me, and one of my students, and now our friend uh, Drew Foistel as well, is working for one oh. of these commercial. Uh, you want to talk about that, right? You're okay with yeah, that? yeah, yeah. That'd be, yeah we one of these commercial. So what's going on, which is kind of cool, is uh, all related to a lot of things we've been talking about, is uh, the commercialization of low Earth orbit, which the Axiom flight is a commercial flight, is a private astronaut yeah. flight, um, but it's you know it's a commercial flight. For commercial enterprise primarily right there's all those companies that i mean those countries that do anyway so but we're trying to turn the the uh low earth orbit into a commercial enterprise correct and axiom is one of those companies that's doing it mm -hmm. how many are there by the way now how many officially there's, uh, are in the there's, game? there's at least uh uh one two three at least four companies serious about what do we got uh, making a commercial space station so we, we got, got axiom um, you got Axiom with the Orbital plans, Reef. The Orbital Reef. Uh, and then you are got. Are you looking the, this up? Um, are you Googling this right now? It looks like you're looking at your computer. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to think. I'm trying All right, okay. to think. So All right. There's, that's there's, that's there's, why there's we have that. you. We have <laughs> Orbital Reef. Who's that? Is that, is that, is that, it, it, it's complicated because they, they just consolidated. It so I think Northrop Grumman uh, ended their uh, project or, uh, and, or joined up with NanoRacks and oh. uh, Voyager, is it? I, there, there's another nanoracks led uh, effort okay so so i think nasa so nasa awarded contracts for development of a commercial uh low earth orbit destinations um uh, and 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 i know that so so axiom has their own contract that's kind of separate because they plan to start out uh attached to the iss right. and then when iss is done they plan to separate and have their own space station so they have a okay. different plan but then there's these other companies, uh, Blue Origin uh, and others that are in Sierra. I think they're teamed up with with uh, um, Orbital Reef. And then you got the NanoRacks. Uh, and I, I think uh, I think they're teamed up with Lockheed or North. If I always confuse those two, I'm sorry. Um, and then um, then there's Vast. And then there's Vast, which is with the company I'm working with. That's other than you and Drew and one of my students, uh, Tycho Bogdanovich. Did you run into him? Uh, you didn't run into him. He was he out at Vast over the summer. Yeah, and I told him to be on the lookout, but I don't think he was had a chance to come. I think he saw you or wasn't able yeah. to come by and say hi. I went by. But, so, uh, yeah, there's Vast on the screen there, and and Vast um, mm -hmm. is working, and and Vast we 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 hope to be the first. So we um we got a good relationship with SpaceX, who's pointing out there, but but Vast uh, is um has this Haven One. There's a picture of it right, I got right it. there. Yep, there you go. Haven One. 
So it's a it's um and the, and the, and we we want to get this thing up in space by 2025, I think. So it's uh, are they building it? Are you guys actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, 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 we're doing component testing and and uh, who's making it for you, Garrett? Are you guys is Vast making it in house? Are they going to the Italians? Uh, no, we're, the the primary structure and everything Vast is making in house. The um uh there there are components that we're acquiring, like the the propulsion. Uh, we're getting from a company called Impulse Space that that is actually led by Tom Mueller, who's a former SpaceX one of the founders of SpaceX. Mm -hmm. And now there's a lot of SpaceX events. I got to tell you, like it, it, that's how I got involved because uh -huh. one of my former SpaceX uh, employees in my group uh, had a had a question for me about that window, and uh -huh. uh, and so I, I I gave him some suggestions and she uh, passed it on. I guess they liked my suggestions and they said, hey, how about you come and and be a, an advisor uh yeah. and so i'm on this advisory team and then and then drew just joined recently and he's yeah. he's he's uh, uh, there too yeah so we're working we're working uh down there trying to get them uh yeah ready to to, to fly the, and the other thing that's cool about bass is the plan is eventually to spin not only uh the the, the, the spin this this one uh but only at a very slow rotation to get a, a fraction of a g uh but then eventually the follow-on to this is a much more ambitious space station that's what we call the stick. It's this big thing that's that starship diameter size, and mm -hmm. and it, it tum tumbles over like a baton. So you get up, up to one G at the ends, and then you can have you know a continuous uh, 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 variation in, in gravity level as you go towards the center, all the way down cool. to zero. So that's that's the yeah. That's what and, all right. So uh, what it, what it, when I I just want to clarify one thing. I said the Italians making it for you. Uh, they made a lot. They made a lot of pressurized volumes, right? For yeah. the space station, Alenia in in Italy Alenia, has yeah, done this. Yeah. I've gotten guys, so I thought maybe you guys were working with them. No, but, but Axiom. Uh, so they're building the. They're building. They're the building it for Axiom. Axiom. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So, I have a couple questions for you. If you show that picture again, that thing looks about the same size as a space station. The diameter of it, anyway, as a space station module. And I, yeah. from what I remember, what I thought was. The reason the space station was that diameter was because it needed to fit in the payload bay of the shuttle. Yep. Is that, or is there something, or is it the same diameter or is that bigger? It's, a, than... it's about the same and, and, and its size. Yeah, there you go. Good job, Des. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has to fit in the fairing of the Falcon. So, uh, oh, okay. So that's why it's that size. That's, that's it's determined by that, which is a yep. roughly equivalent to the shuttle payload bay. So, yeah. So, uh, so then this other ginormous one, that sounds like something out of the 2000 movie. Right, two thousand and one. Yeah. Sorry, the Space Odyssey movie. Um, how how big is that? To that, like, what's the diameter of that thing? Yes, maybe you can find a picture of it on the. It should be on that same site, I think. But it's um. So that's um, that one. We need Starship uh to be able to launch that one. So um, and then it, but it that's too big to fit under the fairing of the Falcon. How's but that? in order for it to generate there that much, is, yeah. check that out. And that thing rotates. Yeah. So, so how how big are we talking? Are we talking a couple hundred yards, or from end to end of that thing, or uh, uh, hundred meters? Yeah, website 100 says meters. hundred meters from end to end. I think hundred meter long spinning. So about the size of the length of the space station. Correct. Yeah, but it moves. The, same length as the ISS, but it rotates. Yeah. Yep. And, and so the gravity is that uh, is that to for the health of the crew, or is there is there another reason for it? Uh, you know, so the the nice thing is um, about this, yeah. So one is its health. So you can you can avoid um, a lot of the countermeasures that we currently mm -hmm. do to prevent you know muscle loss and and uh, and and bone atrophy, uh, muscle atrophy and, and bone loss, and then and, and also things like the the sands, the the the, the issue we're having with with uh, vision uh, mm -hmm. deterioration due to be micro and other things that are popping up like the possibility of reverse vascular flow and 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 um and thrombosis we've mm -hmm. had problems with that so so there's a lot of things if we can get a little artificial gravity going we can, might be able to solve a lot of these problems yeah and not only that but you, you can actually have a cup of coffee which would be nice too right although i guess don pettit figured if you, out how to if you're a coffee it. drinker Capillary yeah pettit coffee. has a zero g co yeah. a coffee cup you know but you know. I, still, I still think you have to hold that thing really carefully right i mean it'd yeah be nice to be able to, and it did and, and, and also be nice to take that cup of coffee and put it down <laughs> right. Hey, so you hey, can do that, Garrett. Which uh, way does this thing spin? Does it spin this way, or does it spin this yeah. way, or like like it it spins 
flat with the solar panels? Um, you know, that's a preliminary design. I'm not sure. Exactly. I think, I think it's, uh, I think it spins uh, in the plane of the solar panels. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's got it's got to it's got to spin like a frisbee, right? If you just rotate it, do a roll with the cabinet, and it can you help wouldn't you. get anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says it's right. seven Starship launches to put this thing up. Yeah, the but website. you know those, are gonna be, those Starship launches are going to be dirt cheap. <laughs> so that's a that's a great thing. No, I mean really, it, it, that's the that's this is the kind of cool thing about Starship is that it enables stuff like this because if it does yeah. achieve your promise. So Starship, it, Starship will will be the first hundred percent reusable. Uh, you know, so Falcon Nine, we still throw away the the the, the upper stage, um, the the shuttle, we threw away the external tank. Mm -hmm. So the, so Starship is supposed to be one hundred percent. Yeah. And if it achieves it's, that and it and it's affordable, then the price per kilogram could drop down to like to the hundreds of dollars. I, I think yeah. Elon was quoted as saying like ten dollars, but. But uh, uh, if, but even if it could achieve like let's go, uh, Garrett, a couple hundred, that's <laughs> amazing. But you I mean, like, it, the shuttle, yeah, we, yeah. we it, it costs like sixty some odd thousand dollars per kilogram to launch something on the shuttle. Well, I was going to say the other thing, Garrett, you could say you know the shuttle was reusable, but not yeah. very efficiently reusable. I mean, they had to go send right. I mean, this thing you say now is going to come back to the launch pad, which is over yeah. the top, you know, return right. But yeah, the, you know, the shuttle, is... they, had to, they had to send a crew of people out there on a boat. To go pick up the solid rockets yeah. and bring them back to the and they were out there for a long. This thing wasn't just you know this was way out there. They had to go out there days ahead of time, right? And then, not only that, but did you ever see like the videos of those scuba divers they had to go and put the plug in? Yeah, the they had to go in there and float. Yeah, float it. And, and it's and this giant solid rocket boosters going up and down in the waves, and they're like yeah. getting hit on the head. I mean, that that like that was like super hazardous. And then, I'm sure there was a there was a requirement for the weather out there that could defer a launch. You know, if it yeah. had a typhoon going on. Anyway, so then they had to come back to the Cape with those things. Then they put them on a train. I rode on that train. <laughs> they put them on a train and, and shipped them out to Utah on a train, and they get repacked yeah. in Utah, and then turned back around on the train to come back to the Cape. So, yeah, it was reusable, but that's not like the thing is coming back and you you know, you know you put it, put gas back in it. And then the shuttle was reusable, yes, but it was, it was also quite – it was also much more complicated than – what you have going on with the uh, with the dragon, right? So it was. It yeah. took a lot of time to process it to get it going. And all again. that maintenance in between flights, yeah, I mean, unbelievable, it never, right? It never you know, achieved like, affordable reusability. You know, so that's that what I mean. Like, that wasn't efficient. So it's not just that it was reusable, which was a good first step, but oh, now I think again, it's more. Look at those guys out there. It's like a big cork that they shoved. Yeah, in the bottom. I, yeah I got the scuba diver go. video for you. That's oh, pretty check cool. that out. Look at those guys. Yeah. guys. yeah. Wow. Hey, we've been going for about an hour here, it looks like. Dad, so you got anybody wants to ask us questions? Or, Gary, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, you haven't told us about your book. I keep trying oh. to get you to talk about the yeah, book. Yeah, there it is. So this is uh, this Tell is us book, about the Garrett. book. Right here, this is it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's called A NASA, A NASA Astronaut's Guide to Achieving the Impossible by mm -hmm. me. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's stories. Um, it's a bunch of stories that uh, lessons, it's kind of like lessons learned. Sort of is, is intended to be like a, a motivational, self-help, inspirational kind of uh, book that uh, it really was my, my agent's idea. I wanted to write a funny book. You and, I got, you and I have talked about that. My agent said, I don't think that's a good idea. And I said, <laughs> All right, how about a kid's book? I haven't written one of those yet. And he said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, what do you think? And he said, I think you should write, uh, you should read Admiral McRaven's Make Your Bed mm -hmm. and see if you have stories that relate to that. Like you know, self help kind of leadership, teamwork, that kind of stuff. So it's there's ten chapters, uh, each one with a theme, and then in the, at the end of each chapter, there's like kind of summary points to it. So it's it's intended to be helpful, you know, about not not persistence and. Uh, mm -hmm. So the first the first chapter is called one out of a million is not zero. As long as you try, there's a chance, more or less. So right. that's that. And there's a there's a there's a chapter on teamwork, on trust, on communication. And so on. So that's can, that's what the book a, is. Give me a sample, uh, if you could, like a, a short, like an anecdote that 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 illustrates one of these. Uh, one of these. Principles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of. Uh, I, <laughs> I want to. There's some funny stuff in there, but I don't know if they're necessarily uh, really the principles. Uh, so I guess let me let me think of one. There's a there's a story one um, that I tell in there about um, uh, about teamwork. 
that uh, remember we had to take that swim test before we could go off to uh, to to swim training and uh, swim training to survival training Pensacola. in, in yeah. Florida, Pensacola. Yeah. So we had to pass that swim test, and I was not a very strong swimmer. So I remember I got that letter in the mail. You know, they say that, and they said, "Please practice your swim skills." I'm like, yeah. "Oh crap!" But luckily, I was already accepted as an astronaut, and they did not ask us whether or not we could swim no. during the interview. So I was like very happy about that. At least they didn't give us the swim test as part of selection. I think they just assumed that you could swim. You know, it's like, <laughs> can you make a grilled cheese sandwich? You know, we don't have to ask that. You know, there's right. certain life skills, like riding a bike, that you should know, right? So, yeah. so I was like very happy that there was no swim test as part of selection. But I was also somewhat horrified that I was going to have to embarrass myself in the water. So I practiced as much as I could getting ready for this. But I was still like, you know, it's one of the first things we did as a, you know, that you had to pass that swim test. So for those listeners out there that are wondering, the reason we had to pass the swim test was in order to go to water survival training with the Navy. And uh, we needed to go to water survival training because the uh, the, the aircraft we were going to fly in a T-38 had an ejection seat. And if you bailed out over the ocean, I need to sneeze. Yeah, excuse me. If you bailed out over the ocean. If you bailed out over the ocean, you need to sneeze. You need, need to, to sneeze. sneeze then, uh, that's okay. <laughs> that's... But if you yeah, bailed out over the ocean, you might end up, you know, you're going to end up in the water and you have to learn how to survive in the water. And also the shuttle had a bailout scenario for aborts that, you know, if you ended up in the water, you needed to survive in the water until they can come get you uh, and save you from this thing that you had them ejecting out of the airplane or jumping out of the shuttle or whatever. So in order to go through that course with the Navy, you had to pass a swim test. And apparently <laughs> people would show up at NASA without good swim skills and they'd send them to the Navy and the Navy sent them back and said, teach them to swim before they drown. So you had to have this this proficiency. And right. so uh, I practiced, but I still wasn't feeling good about it And uh, when I showed up. Because, you, know, you, know, you know, I'm coming in as a civilian like you were, and all these high-performing military people. And it's like, oh, man, you know, what's going to happen? So um, I think it was like at the end of our first week, uh, and we were getting ready to start, you know, really getting into our training the second week. And Jeff Ashby says, uh, comes in, he was our class sponsor, you know, Jeff from a previous class, uh, he says, uh, all right, I want to remind everyone that the uh, we're going to start our training next week, and the first thing we're going to do is the swim test. And I was like, oh, man, you know, all the things. So can we have a math quiz? You know, why do it have to be the swim <laughs> test is the first thing we're going to do? Yeah. And then he goes on, and, and it's going to be the Monday, right? <laughs> we're not wasting any time with this. So he said, all right, and because they wanted to get us to those survival schools. That's one of the first things we did, right? So anyway. So he goes, uh, who are the who are the strong swimmers in this group? And we had Heidi Piper, who was a Navy diver. Yep. And uh, Laurel Clark was also a Navy diver. Mm -hmm. Pierce Sellers raised his hand. He <laughs> so did. He, he learned to swim oh. very, you know, the English way. You know, when he was when he was a lad in one of those fancy schools in England, they taught him how to swim, you know, with the breaststroke very easily, you know. So uh so I think he swim across the channel. He could do that the, the way the way he, he the way he did it. You could you could it would take you a couple of days, but he'd be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, he uh, so they raise their hands, you know, and then and then Ashby goes, okay, who are the weak swimmers in this group? You know, don't lie. We need to know. So I raised my hand, and surprisingly, so did Charles Kamada. Oh really? Come on, yeah, the two of us. Charlie grew up in Queens, and we didn't go in the water where we grew up. You know, I mean, we're not going to go in the water around New York City. I didn't, you, do you remember we were at the Intrepid one time, which we're doing this this show for, and we look over the side of the boat and you see the people in kayaks out there, and you go, "Yeah, those people nuts." I go, yeah, "Why is that?" Remember, remember, they fall in that river. Do you remember that? I remember you look at them and like, like, like you were These like, out uh, of their get, minds. Somebody, don't go in get the them water. out of there. Right. Throw them a life preserver. Right, get them out. What are they doing in there? They nuts. They're going to get splashed with water and get tetanus. Yeah. So we didn't go in the water when I grew up. Neither did Charlie. And uh, so we both raised our hands. And so then Jeff went on to say, okay, everyone else who didn't raise their hand can go home for the weekend, but the strong swimmers and the weak swimmers are going to stay after class. And you're going to arrange a time to meet at a pool on Saturday, on you know, over the weekend. And uh, the strong swimmers are going to help the weak swimmers because when we go to the pool on Monday, we don't want anyone to leave that pool until everyone passes the test. So, so Piers was your instructor? Piers was one of the people I'd volunteered to help. Oh, that's he was, he was so yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. He and I mean, and like I said, we had some of these guys already with the Navy qual. I think Dan Burbank, you know, Coast Guard guy. Yeah. So, but uh, then we all showed up on Monday and we got through. But the point is, you know, when you need help, you know, when you, when you, 
when you can give help, you give it, right? But yep. also when you need help, I always I learned it was important to speak up because if you're trying to hide, I'm not good at something, and then you know I, that surfaces at the wrong time, that's not good either. And so there was never any I felt never really uh, any uh, any shame uh, saying that you needed help because everyone's going to need help with something. Right. So that was, you know, that was the, that's one of the chapters, for example, one of the, stories. that's a great lesson. That's a great yeah. story too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, so, uh, real, real there's quick. more, there's more in here. There's real all quick. Kinds. I, uh, I, yep. we got that link Mike pinned in chat. So folks that are watching the mm -hmm. show right now, or if you're watching afterwards, uh, we've got the link. You can click on it right there. I want to put it in chat a few more times and you'll know, uh, I'm going to like, look at the number of people who click on this and I'm going to go back and try to look cool to Mike and be like, Hey Mike, this many people click the link. So if you get the link in chat there, click on it real quick, go check it out. Uh, there is a link that you can go check out Mike's book. We've got it pinned up there. There we go. They're seeing it all in chat right now. Ah, thank you. Very kind. Yeah. Head on over, head on over to check that out y'all. And, and the more people that click on it the cooler i'll look to mike later <laughs> you're already looking cool Daz. they're not gonna <laughs> this isn't gonna great. make a difference you're just, just a cool guy i just wanted to click the link mike so but all right well thanks for mentioning that garrett i appreciate it yeah and uh, with you I, what's going on you, you've got another uh another season of uh for all mankind coming out what else what's exciting going oh that's on exciting with yeah yeah so what's we, going we on just, with you we just what aired the on? finale of uh the final episode of season four just aired not too long ago so i uh, hope some of you guys out there watched it and enjoyed it Tell us about your role in that show, because I'm sure a lot of the folks here watch that show. I'm the technical advisor, so um, if you have issues about the Delta V required to push that asteroid in season four, you can complain to me, uh, and uh, uh, I'll explain to you the difference between uh, Hollywood and reality. But um, but anyway, it was it was it's a lot of fun to work on that show because they do really care about trying to be remain grounded and show a future in space that is plausible. It's actually the past. It's weird. So it's an alternate history. The idea is that the Soviets land a man on the moon first. Uh, so let's say Leonov is the first man on the moon, not Neil Armstrong. And then oh. everything diverges from actual history from that point. And that's like the butterfly effect. And 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 we see a whole different future uh, or a whole different course of history. And so I think we're in 2003 or 2004 in, in, uh, in the current uh, episode, in the current season. And I'm happy to uh, to tell you we're working on season five. So uh, I was just in the writer's room last week working on concepts and ideas for season five. Uh, so we're going ahead and and uh, uh, it's going to be pretty cool where we're taking the show. I can't I can't give you any spoilers or anything, but uh, I think I think uh, for those of you that are fans of the show, uh, hopefully you're going to really enjoy uh, the next season. It's going to be kind of cool. So so Garrett, you're the your role in this. You are the tech advisor for this, which is a pretty big yeah. role. Right. Yeah. And I know yeah, you enjoy so it's, doing it's, that. It's fun. It's it's kind of a, a you know, I get to touch uh, or, or be part of all different aspects of the production. I get to be in the writer's room. I meet with the cast. I meet with I, I work with the stunt guys, the VFX guys. I review all the scripts. I, I even get calls from my care and makeup. They have questions, you know, and, and uh, which I'm not really that qualified for but it, it, it's, uh, <laughs> what's what's the vfx guys is that visual effects or visual like effects that? yeah so we get a lot of a lot of really we have very talented so, got this guy chris red who's an, an incredibly talented um mm -hmm. i'm sorry j red i said chris j red he's a very talented uh uh, uh 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 computer effects specialist and they do great work and i work with the costume designer esther marquis you know and so i actually got her a job at axiom uh, she designed the uh, cover layer for their spacesuit, and um, and then she designed the flight suits that you saw the Axiom Three wear. Very nice. Three crew wear. So we got some crossover there. Cool. Yeah, it's been fun. Now, um, and is that the same? Uh, there was uh, are they the same outfit that that made the the SpaceX spacesuit as well. Uh, no. Is that different? That's different. That's different. No, I was, when I was on the Big Bang Theory, we wore like a, we wore a a, a a replica of the of the launch suit. What's the matter with me? You know the, uh, the not the, the, Asus? the Asus. No, no, oh, the, 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 the Russian you're on, one. You're on the, the, you're in the Soyuz, yeah, Sokol. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and uh, I thought it was it was a, a Hollywood group that I thought it also made. They said they had done some work with with uh, SpaceX, but but that's not the the thing I wanted to say was is that uh, people ask me all the time if I watch that show. Right. And I was like, yeah, and I know the guy that, you know, that is responsible for everything. First, I make sure that they like the show. So, I, oh, do you like the show? And, it, and they all say yes. And then I tell them, well, you know, my friend Garrett is involved. Do you get, do people come up to you a lot and ask you if they've seen the show? And then you say, yes, and I, I'm responsible. Yeah. 
I do get that. Out. Like, like yeah. have you, uh, there's a show I'm watching. Uh, you should watch it. I'm like, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. What? Anything else you want to tell people about? I mean, that's very exciting. Anything else? You oh, yeah. Another, another thing we should mention is um, we just uh, a couple of weeks ago raised the external tank here at the California. Oh Science yes, for yeah. Endeavor. Uh, and uh, we stacked it up with the solid rocket booster. So, so wow. The plan with Endeavor is to display her in the launch position with the with the solid rocket boosters, the big orange tank, and then Endeavor on the side, like she's, just like she was on the launch pad. Yeah. And so far, we've got the two solid rocket boosters standing up. We got the big orange tank in the middle. The very next step, which is coming up here in another just about another week, we plan to lift Endeavor herself and and put her uh, onto the stack there. Wow. Yeah. Is it going to be covered? Or is it not going to be out in the weather? Is it? Are you going to be able to cover it they, too? You know, or? they've already wrapped it up in plastic. There, there's the external tank coming in. Check yeah. that out. Isn't that cool? It, it, it just, that's a time uh, lapse, obviously. But, but but are you putting a building around it or something? Or what are you yeah. doing? So, so the thing is that what they have to do is stack it all up and yeah. then build the building around it. Wow. Once the building is built, there's no way to get the Endeavor inside. There yeah. Right. That's yeah. the one I was looking for right there. Oh, there we go. Check that out. So wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. So we got, uh, yeah, so I was out there when we started lifting the external tank and, and, uh, hopefully I'll be able to be out there when we, when we lift up, uh, Very exciting. Very in exciting. another week. So pretty cool, but cool. she's all wrapped up in, in like, in like saran yeah. wrap. So yeah. it's going to look a little funny. That's a nice touch. Yeah. We're both lucky. We're affiliated with two places, uh, the intrepid museum and the California science center that have space shuttles. Because yeah. the other, and then the Air and Space Museum and Kennedy Space Center is where the others are. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be really cool when you guys get that. Uh, so I'm, so I'm, when we come out to D.C. for the Kelly's party in, mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks, I'm bringing my son Buster. And we're oh, is that go, right? Yeah. And You're bringing uh, Buster to the party? He's been to all these museums, but he's never been to the National Air and Space Museum. Uh, uh, they got a new Apollo exhibit there. Yeah. They're doing a lot of work there. You may want to. <laughs> you may want to call ahead of time. <laughs> Yeah. I was just down there, and and it's kind of strange. Like they, you just don't walk in any. At least they weren't doing this in December. Do you know about this? Yeah, we got a reservation. Yeah, yeah. you got to get a reservation. Or I don't know if you have to, but we I got think it makes we it got a lot one. easier. Yeah, you just can't like walk in the building, like you know. Yeah. So, so we can do that the day we can go there on Sunday, the day after yeah. the party, and then on Monday we're gonna go to Udvar Hazy and see Discovery and and all the other. Vehicles. Oh, that'll be great. The problem is yeah, no, they've, got, they've got I saw their new Apollo exhibit. I think you'll like that too. They're doing a lot of work in that museum. Yeah. So and he's like, Dad, you know, I need like at least a week at each of those. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, right, well, so this is so my son and I have been to those places. It's been how old is Buster now? Is he like 10 years old? He just or turned so? 13. 13. God in heaven. All right. So uh <laughs> so I think the first time Dan when or maybe the last time we were there was he was about that age. He was about 14. I don't think we've been there together since. But he just, uh, a couple, when I was there in, in December, because we got to go there together. So we're looking for an opportunity to go as well. Yeah. Um, to go, because he wants to see. He's doing He's doing some research now, moon related I, I, stuff. So. I remember making my first trip down there when I was 13. And it, really? And this is why I say when I talk about the California Science Center and Intrepid, yeah. how important yeah. these museums are, because I oh, remember yeah. going down there and we were supposed to have like an hour. To see the whole thing yeah and uh after an hour i met my family and uh and they're at the like we were gonna okay we're gonna meet like yeah. under the right flyer yeah at uh after an hour and i'm like come on I, i've only made it like a quarter of the way through one room not and, even uh, yeah yeah and i'm like i'm staying like the yeah. whole trip i'm staying here yeah and then they were cool they left they, they went off and they're like well we're supposed to go see the lincoln memorial and i'm like sorry i'm uh, i you know yeah. and I, I i still haven't seen the lincoln memorial uh, I, it's I hear still it's there. Nice. It's still, I can still see it. Yeah. So they came back after the end of the day, and I'm like, I got to come back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> they, they brought me back the next day. Yeah, I was like that. I didn't get there until I was in grad. When, no, I was at. I was in, after college. Is the first time I went. Might have been the first time I went to Washington D.C. We didn't go very many places, even though I didn't grow up that far away. Yeah. But uh, but no, what a great place. And you're right. I, I think you know what I did in New York City growing up. Uh, well, outside of the city, but I went to uh, the the um, when I was little, I, I begged my parents to take me to the planetarium, to the, mm. the the American Museum of Natural History, and then Intrepid came on board. Uh, I think it was like 1981 or 82, is when Intrepid started. Uh, Doss is probably searching that, 
But I remember going there as a college student with a group of, uh, I was a big brother for, and so was a lot of my friends for a bunch of little, you know, younger, younger people. And we took them there on a field trip. That was the first time I was on Intrepid. So that was a great place that young people could go and still is, you know, to, to learn and dream about stuff. So, um, yeah, it's great. So, um, do we want to, what else you got? Do we want to go to see if there's a question or two from the audience or? Yeah, we only, we only, only got about time left. We, we got about yeah, eight minutes been... left. Yeah, I got, I got, taken... a, I got a couple questions. If y'all want me okay. to uh, toss a couple questions in, go yeah. Ahead. Uh, one of them. Thanks for tuning in today. How much fun are these? Wait, I don't think that's a question. How much fun are these guys? Chat. How much fun are these guys? Have y'all been having fun with the show today? Um, let us know what y'all think. Mike and Garrett here, just talking about cool stuff. An actual question here. Was there, was there a thing, Mike? Uh, a training thing in the NBL when there was a light that was not working or something. You were talking about pools and people in chat were, were saying, Oh yeah, Mike and swimming and, and lights. Was there a thing about the NBL and a light not working? I think what that person is referring to was, uh, there was a, uh, a PBS program that came out, a documentary. I think it was called like, uh, Hubble's amazing rescue. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. Right. I think that's what they're referring to. And in that, you know, there, there was the filmmaker um, and I, it, we were good friends. And I, what, what's the matter? I can't, I'm not remembering his name right here, but really good guy. And I hope I can remember his name. Uh, Daz, help me out. Filmmaker, look at the I don't know. For, look at a producer for a, a Hubble's Amazing Rescue on PBS, please, if you don't mind. I'm on it. All right. Thank you. But... Uh, just a great guy. Anyway, uh, they had access to they they would they would watch our uh, watch our runs that part of it. They followed us through our training, and they got a lot of the the film and and um, part of it. Part of the issue was uh, that I think this person is referring to because that's how you would find out about it by watching the show. Is that I was having trouble with a light on the end of a on the end of a power tool, and was saying how we needed the light. We don't have the light. I can't let it. And so that's probably what they're talking about. So we, we um, there was a new power tool that was created for our flight. It was called the Mini Power Tool. So Garrett, compared to the, I don't know if you ever seen this thing, but compared to the the PGT, which you're very familiar with, yep. this one was really high speed to go about three r three hundred RPM. Uh, it had a light on it. It had a, like an a, a um, an adjustable trigger. Uh, it it was really slick. It was kind of like a, a the one a power tool you would get at the hardware store. You know kind of really sleek and cool looking mm -hmm. <laughs> you get a good feel for it so i think that's what that person is referring to gotcha i got that <laughs> the nova producer rush denoyer rush lim yeah rush, not rush, rush limbaugh rush, rush Deno different denoyer rush. right yeah denoyer rush you got denoyer. It. yeah yeah rush, there you go. great guy <laughs> yeah rush was a great guy and uh yeah so he put that together so i was complaining a lot i was embarrassed by that because the footage he took it was the day i was complaining not that I complain all the time, but there are times I don't complain, but he put that in there. Mm -hmm. So, cause I was complaining about the light, which I think probably why that person remembers it. Remembers that specifically. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Um, Hey, here's, here's a question. This one's come through from quite a few different people. Uh, where are y'all in space? Like would either y'all hop back in a dragon capsule or dream case or whatever and, and go back to space or are y'all happy on the ground now? Mike, how about you first? I live on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, this is this is nice over here. I don't, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, I thought about this. I would I would love to go back, but I, I think really I would need a reason to go back. <laughs> like if it was if there was, uh, you know, I, and I'm very grateful for the opportunities I had. But if there was, you know, a mission where I would have some sort of I think something I felt was really important, whether that even be outreach or an opportunity to do something that uh, uh, that maybe I knew something. If it was like another mission to Hubble, you know, I count me in for that. I would do that. Or if there was something special about what I could do, but I think I would need I would need like a real reason uh, to uh, to go because it's a big commitment. I mean, I'm not thinking of you just going up for five minutes and you show up one day and you fly the next. But I'm thinking more like a you know a mission. And I think if it was something that I felt was important that I could contribute to. I, I would I would love to go again, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Garrett, what about you? I don't need much of a reason. I, I'll go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think um, you know, with all these new commercial opportunities, you know, with like Vast, with uh, Axiom, and everything, uh, there's always 
new possibilities. You see like LA and Peggy going and yeah. Um, I think in the, you know, in the right circumstances, I, I would, I would be very, you know, if somebody came to me, like I was joking around there, I got this question a lot down at the Cape last week, mm -hmm. uh, by the families and stuff. And they're like, would you want to do this? And I said, look, if LA comes out of that helicopter and sprains his ankle, uh, on his way to the launch pad and they, they're looking around like, Hey, we need some, you know, need somebody to jump in. I, I, yeah. I, I'll go. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hop right in. That's fine. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, we, we, we both got pretty good gigs going on here in Mass. I think I think we're pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think given the given the right opportunity, um uh and 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 you know, I, I'm doing this stuff with 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 Vast and Axiom and stuff and, and SpaceX. And I remember telling Elon Musk this. I said, you know, I'm not here because I want to find a way back to space. Yeah. If I wanted to fly in space again, if that's what it was all about, I could have just stayed at NASA. Yeah. And and there I could have flown on the Soyuz, gone back to the space station. Yep. But I, but there are other there's an opportunity cost there. There's yeah. other things to do, and yeah, that's what that's what that's why I went to SpaceX was to try to help them be successful. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do with with Vast and and everybody else. So I'm happy doing that. If an opportunity comes up, I'm not going to say no. But uh, I'm also not like angling for it and and trying real yeah. hard to make it happen. So yeah, I think I think we feel similarly about it. If it was uh, if it was something if if someone offered to me, I would not turn it down. But I, but it, like you're right. I think becoming a NASA astronaut took so much time and work. You know, <laughs> you know, it was a it was a long road. I think longer for me than you. I think you. I think you got you were how, were you 30 years old when you were picked or 29 or how old you? Were yeah, young. I think I was, I was 90. So I was, it was, it was uh, I was 30 in like a couple months. So I just after my 30th birthday. Yeah. So I was 33. How old was I? I was 33, uh, close to being 34, which was pretty young. I mean, for for yeah. me as well right so and you picked a couple years after i was but um but uh that you know there was you know there's a lot that goes in there and there's a lot of training and if you want to do it right you know i'm not talking about like an amusement park where i'd go up and you know float around for four minutes but to actually do a mission is going to require a lot of time and and uh and i think you know if it's if it's handed to me <laughs> I, yeah you know what i mean i'll say yes but i don't know if uh you know, putting the effort in to try to scheme or, you know, figure out like John Glenn, when he went back, Oh yeah, know, John Glenn went back, but John Glenn did a lot of paperwork to go back to space. He did. You know, he went, he had to you know, come up with the reason why. And it was, you know, it was a biomedical thing. And, you know, that's a, that's a lot of, you know, it's like, you've done a little bit of acting, right? You were on the big, uh, you were on the, on your show, the for all mankind. And yeah. And I've been on a, I've been on a, I'm going to be in a movie coming out. I think I filmed this thing over a year ago. It's called Space Cadet. Oh yeah, uh, it's a, yeah. It's supposed to be coming out. I'm in this movie, and I didn't know about I do that. Things That's once cool. in a while, you know. I do things, but I remember after the, I was on seven episodes of that Big Bang Theory, right? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I wanted to, you know, uh, someone said to me, "You should do more acting." You know, and I said, "Really, well, I can't." I can't do any. I'm not an actor. I just do me. Go. That's good enough. He said, well, "You could be." I go. What else can I do? I'd be saying, "You could be a judge." The guy told me you could be a cop. Judge. He didn't say I could be a mafia guy. He uh, left that out. I could be a criminal. And I go, all right. So I asked, so I asked my agent. I said, hey, what about this acting? Mary can do some more acting. He goes, oh, if you want, I can get you some, you know, auditions. I'm going, what? And he goes, you know, you go there and you stand in line. You're doing an audition. I go, ah, the hell with it. If someone comes to me and says, we want you to, do, you know what I mean? like, he goes, well, you know, you could. I'm not going, nah, no, 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 no. So I think that's it's like an work. indication. You know, someone hands it to me, like, hey, Mike, yeah. you want to go? I think. But you know, to to try to figure out how to do it, I don't. Yeah, Ch Chad over here wants to nominate you for one of these. Uh, have you heard of the the private Hubble rescue missions? The proposed private Hubble rescue yeah. missions to go back and reboost or fix the Hubble or something. You talking about yeah, that relevant I would do. skills? That's like a relevant skill. You no, I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, no, I would do that. I, you know, I think I never had a chance. I went to the space station and make believe on the Big Bang Theory, so I never got to do that as part of my career at NASA. So that would I would love to do that. But at the same point that I, because I haven't gone, yeah. you know, I couldn't fulfill the same role like Garrett could because Garrett was actually there. So I would be a new guy on the space station. So there you go. Um, but yeah, the, the job requirement says like wanted must have experience repairing Hubble Space Telescope. And you're like, oh, hey, wait. Well, there's other guys that could do that, too. Yeah, fair enough. And, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised with these private missions that NASA isn't throwing one of their people in, into the mix. You know, Garrett? Yeah, to get more flight opportunities. Yeah, mean? why not? And, you know, in this yeah. way. You know, but um, it's a nice opportunity. This is a kind of a first time thing, right? Where astronauts have a, a post space flying career. 
that uh, yeah. this never yeah. this didn't exist when we were going through the through the program. So yeah, no, it's, it's a brave new world, and, and yeah, uh, very yeah, exciting. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, I think it's time to go, isn't it? It's about it's four thirty one yeah. here. Uh, we've got oh, yeah. ninety minutes here, so. Um... Y'all, thank you so much. I like. I was just being quiet. I was rapidly Googling things over here to try and verify facts and stuff like that. Uh, got a couple of the tweets and videos and stuff we were talking about there. But, Mike, Garrett, thank y'all so much for taking time out of your Sunday to hang out with us here. No problem, Des. Always Thanks, fun man. hanging out with you, Mass. See you. See you yeah, it's always a pleasure. Party. Good catching up. What did we used to sign off with two funny astronauts? Did we have a – You'll have like a thing? We have like a sign-off? Did we have a sign We had, a, we had uh, something. We had a – um Ah. Uh, you think remember. about that. I can't remember. Think Just about that. Anyway, oh. <laughs> thanks for tuning in, uh, folks. Yeah. Real yeah. quick, uh, right, we do have stuff happening next month as well. We oh, have God. Kids Week is happening next oh, month, yeah. February 14th through 22nd, 27th, or 24th, actually, out there is in Jessica New York. Is going to be there? I d- I don't. I don't think we know the exact uh, guest list yet. I know they're still yeah. working on the guest list, but uh, this is the imagery I was given. It's February seventeenth through the twenty fourth in person in New York, and we're also going to bring some of that to y'all via live stream. It sounds like we may be out there doing that, but that's a thing. You know, we do these Astro Live events here on the Intrepid Channel once a month. It comes in around the third Thursday. If you haven't followed yet, whatever social media you're on, follow the museum social media. Go to the website, intrepidmuseum.org, to get more information about it. Or if you're in New York City, y'all were talking about this. Like, you don't just go, oh, we'll go spend an hour at the Intrepid Museum. Like, get a good half day or something, a day at over least. at the Intrepid Museum. Um, to check things out. But let's see, what is, what's some other housekeeping? Oh, we said that it's the beginning. Astro Live, supported through a NASA cooperative agreement, accorded to the New York Space Grant Consortium. Appreciate that. The shows don't just happen magically. And also, hey, some folks have been supporting Intrepid Museum here. We've been doing these shows as fundraisers, so you can toss a couple bucks into the hat and support Intrepid Museum's educational programming. And I've seen quite a few things come in there today. So thank you all for doing that. We don't, like, spend time during the show like, oh, thank you for the $5. But it all goes into the hat so Intrepid can continue doing these sorts of things. Um, For now, that's, I think, going to bring us to the end of the show. I want to talk to you all after the show about a road trip where you all visit all the shuttles and then make like comment on all the shuttles and we like record you behind the scenes while you're doing that that's a show to pitch i think um yeah. but anyway talking to me and garrett i'm talking to you and garrett in the no, i'm not talking to chad i'm talking <laughs> to y'all i want to follow y'all around and hear y'all stories um but thank y'all so much for uh you're a brave today. you're a brave young man <laughs> <laughs> hey we like to have fun and we like space stuff and uh you two are definitely inspiring human beings who've given a lot of people a good uh, at least a good sunday afternoon here learning about your experiences with space and your thoughts on what's going on um that is the end of the show though we could just wave or whatever and uh we will well, see y'all next time mike garrett thank you so much. thanks very much it's garrett it's always great uh, seeing you and thanks folks for listening to our for you know garrett and i catching up and dash you did a great job thanks very much yeah, thanks, really dash, really well done just click it on stuff and googling stuff mike you're the best <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. All right. I'm going to roll the music here and uh, make sure you follow whatever channel you're watching. Check out the books as well. It's still pinned in chat. If you go up to the top of chat, you can get another link to Mike's book. Um, Help the little number on my graph go up the number of people that clicked on it. But for now, that's the end of this week's Intrepid Museum Astro Live, and we will see you nerds later. Thanks for watching, y'all. That's my sign off. See you nerds later. So. Oh, I thought you were talking about No, I'm talking to everybody. (laughs) Uh, Show's (laughs) over. Bye. We're turning the show off. Here we go. And here we go. We have lift off. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our ACA chamber pressure looks good. Following up.